see the PhD. Good, good to know. So Mirdipta finished PhD and now he's back to India. He's in Bangalore in Shell uh, Computational Center. Uh, Kostas and Yorgos, they both, uh, we, we collaborate a lot with, uh, with them, mainly on uh, uh, improve, improving this membrane by uh, uh, augmenting them with some nanocompos, with some fillers. So we, uh, we use standard membranes, which I will show later, but we put some nanofillers inside, graphene oxide, and then we try to see the difference in properties. Pavel from uh, University of Tver, he was also helpful in making the initial samples for computer simulations of different polymers and different uh, polymer membranes. Uh, before COVID, I was lucky. I spent one month in, uh, uh, in India, in Pune. Uh, this is Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research. The group of Professor Arun Venkat Nathan and his PhD student Rakesh I'm very happy I did my simulations there for after a long, long break by myself. And I will show excellent results today. I am very happy I did it myself there. The idea is that, uh, that Arun will come to Eindhoven also at exchange program. And this was not finalized due to COVID. We hope he will come this year, but it's not, not, not easy to convince them to continue this program now. Okay, uh, our group is also part of the Center for Computational Energy Research in Nainthoven. And then in, in this center, many multi-scale computer simulation methods are used, starting from DFT, ab initio, quantum mechanics to microscopic modeling. And then all these methods are devoted to solve energy-related problems. So solar fuels, fuels, novel, novel photovoltaics materials, fusion, carbon capture, batteries is a big part of research. So how to store energy is a, is a, is a hot topic, at least in Netherlands. So why I will speak about batteries and I will mainly speak about molecular dynamics, atomistic molecular dynamic simulations. So this is the beast, this is the device. It's called flow battery. So it's a huge electrochemical device. The key elements are the tanks with electrolytes Normally vanadium is used because vanadium has different oxidation degrees, right? It's a, a well, with different, uh, well, this, this is, these are external huge tanks. And then we need to have uh, uh, electrochemical reaction. We speak about reduction and oxidation. So this is anode here. And then uh, on anode oxidation takes place upon discharge, electrons are released to the external uh, load. And protons should go inside uh, the membrane and reach cathode, right? And then electrons go to cathode from external loop. When they meet, there's a reduction, the full circle is finished, yes? So then the key element here is membrane, which separates two electrolytes, otherwise they will mix, there will be no fun. So this is a very important element and I will speak about this membrane. So. This is well snapshot from simulations. I will show you what kind of materials we are looking. So this is the atomistic simulation of this membrane which separates two electrolytes, yeah. Fuel cell, it's another example. So flow batteries to store energy, to convert chemical energy into electrical one. Fuel cell is to produce energy from fuels. It's a bit different a principle. The reaction is very simple, but if you do it in an uncontrolled way, it's very dangerous. So you have to control it. You have to separate hydrogen, which comes to anode from uh, natural gas, basically, in one type of fuel cell, which is called polyelectrolyte membrane fuel cell. So fuel comes here, oxidation takes place here, electrons go again to do some job, and protons go through membrane to cathode when they reach, when they meet uh, oxygen from air, and the only product is electricity and water. Nice. So again, the same materials can be used to make membrane. So again, I will speak about membrane here. And this is the key element of my presentation today. So what is this membrane? Polyelectrolyte. Materials. I will speak about only a few examples. There are many. I'll speak about polyelectrolyte materials. So then the main thing, even till now, is so-called nafion membrane synthesized by DuPont many, many, many years ago. What is this? 
I'm not chemist, and my apology to chemists in the audience. This is the main chain, which is polytetrafluoroethylene, which is called Teflon, right? Very stable, very chemically inert, very hydrophobic. If you like cooking, you always use this, and then nothing is stuck to, to Teflon surface. To make it ion specific, you have to modify it. And this is the modification. So every monomer here is modified by this side group, which is ended with sulfonic acid, uh, with uh, uh, this uh, uh, sulfonic acid. And this sulfonate group can be discharged. It can be ionized in what environment? In what environment it releases protons and acquires negative charge. So protons go to water and every monomer is now charged negatively, yeah? And normally uh, uh, M is a degree of polymerization, so it's equal to 10, so it's not very long chains. Well, this is nafion. Uh, this is a snapshot of one single chain of nafion. This is very hydrophobic backbone, very hydrophobic. And these are sulfonate groups, which are hydrophilic. Actually, they like water. Nafion is good. It's very strong mechanically. It absorbs a lot of water. It promotes the proton transport and has very nice and good and big proton conductivity, which is what they want. This is the structure, artistic view of very complicated heterogenic structure of uh, hydrated nafion domain, right? So you see crystalline domain mainly made by this backbone. These are water, micelles, if you have water inside. So the, the sulfonate groups are pointed towards this water myosins. Inside you have water and also counter ions, hydrogens. But hydrogens are hydrated and they, they create hydronium ions, H3O plus. So hydrogen is present there in the form of hydroniums. These myosins are connected by water channels. This is a big discussion about the structure of these uh, connected myosins. How they look like this? Probably not. Some people speak about elongated cylinders, more elongated uniformly in uniform and thickness, but this is debated topic. And of course you have uh, also amorphous parts. So it's a semi-crystalline polymer, but the crystalline domains are connected by amorphous parts. So it's very complicated macroscopic structure, very heterogenic one. What happened? Right, nothing happened. Well, nothing is good, but, but there are many buts. First, if you want to use a fuel cell battery at high temperature, which normally people use because high temperature is good to prevent uh, poisoning of very expensive and contamination of very expensive catalytic surfaces, which are made of platinum. So people try to increase temperature, but upon temperature increase, water disappears. If there's no water, there's no conductivity. So people want to increase temperature, but retain water inside. How to do this? Well, that's a challenge, but uh, dehydrates about above 353. This is bad. There are many other beds, and then last but not least, it's a very expensive. People think about alternatives. So nafion, okay. And then one uh, charge group, ionizable group per monomer. They have uh, also multi-acidic alternatives. When you have more than one ionizable group per monomer, and then for example, they speak about perfluoramide acid, PFYA, which has two groups. One is sulfonated end, and in the middle we have sulfonylamide, which also can be ionized, but upon different hydration level. Important parameter in this business, which I'll speak about a lot, is lambda. This is hydration level. Basically, it's amount of waters per ionizable group. Lambda zero, dry nafion, lambda five, five waters per group. So typically in experiments, they, they vary lambda from zero to 20. Dry nafion is exotic example. Normally it's always like hydrated. Yeah, so lambda is important parameter. Uh, other alternative, at least in Stanford, they play a lot with uh, block copolymers. They synthesize uh, polyethylene glycol and some polyimide block copolymer. And nice idea, remove water completely. Instead of water, use ionic liquid, like ethylene, uh, like, uh, what is this? Uh, ethanol amine, I, I don't know. E e -an, it's a standard one. This one, this one, it's ionic liquid. Why ionic liquid? Ethyl ammonium nitrite, I think it's called. 
Why? Because they have high melting and boiling temperature always. And then you don't, uh, you, you don't have a problem with dehydration. So instead of water, they use this. And this is a nice idea. Well, there are many alternatives. And then if you still use pro protic ionic, uh, protic water batteries based on aquas batteries on, on, on water. So different inorganic and organic fillers are inserted into this nafion. For example, silica or graphene oxide, which try to help to retain water inside this battery. So there are many nanocomposites and many solutions. I will speak mainly about nafion today. So we do molecular dynamics. This is the snapshot of bulk of two polymers, nafion and this multi-acid, multi, uh, multi, uh, um, uh, Multi, what we, we, with multi acidic membrane, PFIA. So, this is uh, computer simulations. We use LAMPS software uh, for those who want details, PCFF force field, also to model water with PCFF. The charges we took from compass. PCFF, if I'm not mistaken, is without charges. The charges are taken from another force field. Uh, what is interesting? Temperature, room temperature a bit enhanced. This is an important parameter, this hydration level from five to 20. And the rest, uh, well, it's not very big system when uh, from say five to 20 nafion chains. Degree of polymerization is small, but this is standard in experiments and, and monomers. And then this is a uh, people also synthesizes in different, this kind of nafion batteries, nafion membranes. Snapshots, if you have no results, always show snapshots. What you see here, orange is the domain, are domains of backbones, right? So these are hydrophobic domains. And then you see this uh, other color domains. These are micelles, mainly made of uh, water, hydronium ions, and then this uh, charged sulfonin, sulfonin groups inside. If you increase lambda, well, you see that these domains are start to connect. Percolation, if you like. What is the percolation threshold? This can be understood. It's not a topic of my talk, but we can calculate it. You need percolation. In order to provide transport of protons, you need connectivity. You need connected water domains. So definitely above lambda 15, you have percolation already. This is important. Well, for chemists, they always want to know what is the separation between these charge groups which are sulfur groups, sulfonate groups. And then quantum mechanical calculations show that if it's roughly five angstrom in between, then it's good. If they are very close to each other, they trap, they are negatively charged. They trap hydroniums and the hydroniums are trapped by them. They cannot go and they cannot pro uh, uh, provide conductivity. So the separation is important. We try to check for nation. Indeed, this is uh, roughly of the order of uh, five angstrom. And this is not uh, changed upon hydration. So basically it stays at the same level. For PFIA material, this is not the case. Upon changing lambda, the distance is increasing a little bit, but increasing. Why? Because upon lamb increase of lambda, you ionize this additional sulfonyl, sulfonyl nitride nitrate group, right? Which, uh, and then you have more repulsion between this, uh, uh, this charge group. And then the distance is increased. Not much, but it's pronounced effect. Okay, let's uh, try to calculate proton transfer. This is proton conductivity. This is the key property which I would like to address. So there are actually two mechanisms which, I'm, uh, which should be taken into account. The first one on the right, it's a normal Brownian diffusion of protons, hydroniums, waters. It's called vehicle transport. Einstein diffusion, if you want. This we can easily calculate and check and measure in experiments in molecular dynamics as well. On the left, this is pure quantum mechanical mechanism, which is hopping of protons from one water, from one, oop, oop, from one water to another. And this is called Grotto's mechanism. You cannot take into, into account by doing this kind of computer simulation with this kind of force fields. It's classical force field. You cannot break the bond easily. You need to do something else. And this something else, well, the alternative, of course, reactive force fields. There are many groups who take into account this, but this is the, uh, uh, well, uh, short, 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 shortcoming, right, of this kind of simulation. I will speak mainly about classical diffusion. 
Grotus mechanism is not taken into account. So what we measure? We measure the translational mobility, mean square displacements of ions, waters, and extract diffusion constant for water and hydronium at different temperatures. Dashed curves are for Nafian. Solid curves are for PFIA. What can you see? They are very close to each other. The diffusion coefficients, this is lambda, hydration level, they're very close to each other. This is water, this is hydronium. Diffusion of hydronium is order of magnitude slower because these are charged. And of course, something is trapped by SO3 groups. So diffusion is slow, but this is always almost the same between two forms. Fine. How to get proton transport conductivity? We use uh, we use Faraday equation. So this is electric conductivity, which is connected to the diffusion constant of ions. You have valency of ions. You have concentration of ions. This is called Faraday constant. This is Boltzmann factor, and the sum of all over all all the ions in the system. Because in PFI, you have more ions. Of course, the final conductivity, classical one, is much higher. The fusion constant is the same, but Z, not Z, but concentration C is larger. These values are still small. First, probably it's because of Grotus transport, which is not taken into account here. And second, maybe then, was, well, we didn't take into account something else. But we don't, the idea was not to compare with experiment, just to see the effect. Right, so well, next task is to take into account this mechanism somehow and see the how important is this. Right, this is always a challenge, right, to connect structure of the pore of this uh, membrane pore and final proton transport or any other pore. You see, very very complicated structure here. They make membrane, fresh membrane. They leave it, and this membrane is aged, which is called aging annealing. The properties, especially proton transport, is changed drastically. So it's a big question. What happens to conductivity with time upon annealing? And very specific question to this, uh, what about the glass transition in these membranes? It's hydrated, water is inside. Can we speak about glass transition at all? And of course, of course upon aging, glassification takes place more and more, this definitely affects water transport and then proton conductivity. So this is the question for, for the uh, next 20, 15 minutes maybe, yeah? This is the question which I would like to address, but first, what is glass transition? This probably, well, only a few introduction, if it's boring, just tell me. Uh, this is the classical plot of viscosity. Well, actually logarithmic viscosity as a function of temperature for simple liquid, well, what is not simple, at least the chemical structure is simple. For simple liquid, you have something like this. It's called phase transition. In the first order, you have transition from liquid to crystal. In many liquids, which are more complex, you cannot have crystallization, and instead you have glass. And this, this transition is not that sharp, but a bit continuous. And this is instrumental practical definition of TG, glass transition temperature, when the viscosity reach 10 power 12 pascal per second, characteristic relaxation time is roughly 100 seconds. But this is practical definition. And you see the problem already. And it's practical, so it's, there's no big jump. Then the viscosity can be a little bit larger or a bit lower than 10, 10, 10 power 12. Are you above or below TG? This is difficult, yeah? Well, I typed yesterday, uh, uh, web of science, and then uh, the key word is uh, glass transition. I got, you don't see it, but I got about 11,000 things. It's hot topic. Huh? And then many papers, many papers on different glasses, starting from spin glasses to polymer glasses, metal glasses, thin films. It's very hot topic now, not only in computer science, but in soft matter. So what happens upon cooling? This is the standard PVT plot, pressure, volume, temperature plot. This is the specific volume, inverse density of the sample as a function of temperature. For simple liquid, again, you have phase transition. This is liquid part. This is crystalline part. This is melting temperature. In reality, this is not the case. If you are not patient, if you cool down quickly, instead of crystal, you produce amorphous solid, which is not regular in, in the sense of structure. This is glass. If you cool down further, this is frozen completely, looks like solid, 
but it's not solid thermodynamically because it's not existing. Yeah, so this is glass example. Oh, there are many of uh, these silica glasses outside, polymer glasses. These are all uh, uh, materials below glass transition temperature. So what happens to polymers? These are complex liquids, definitely. So if you continue with this plot, you have liquid-like part, then you have rubbery part, if you have entanglements, physical or chemical, and then glass. If you continue this uh, so-called uh, equilibrium curve, if you do it very slowly, uh, you have point, which is called Kaltzmann temperature. At this point, the entropy of your frozen liquid is becoming smaller than the entropy of crystal. So it's called Kaltzmann paradox, but you always have glass before this uh, happens. These are all simulations in our group. So we try to see, is it possible to produce glass on a computer? Yes, and these are typical glass formers, polystyrene and bisphenol A polycarbonate, specific volume as a function of temperature. You fit the slopes uh, by straight lines and then from cross section, you extract G. And these values are not that badly compared to the, uh, not the, the good agreement with experiment for both polymers, they always shift a bit up a bit. The explanation is easy because we always cool down in molecular dynamics very quickly. And this is orders of, orders, an orders of magnitude quicker cooling. And every decade of cooling uh, uh, rate produces the small logarithmic, it depends logarithmically. So every decade produces few degrees of uh, difference into, into TG simulated as compared to experiments. Right, let's go back to nothing. That's experimental. Let's uh, summarize what we know from experiment. This experimental result, this is the electric conductivity as a function of annealing time. Annealing time zero, freshly made nafion membrane. Yeah, it increases initially and then drops drastically upon increase of aging, upon annealing. And this decreases slightly dramatic, it's order of magnitude. Another experimental result even shows even larger decrease, two orders of magnitude at some specific lambda, right? So with aging, conductivity decreases by a few orders of magnitude. They suggest explanation, no proof, but this is this explanation which is suggested. So this is a anode, this is cathode, these are water domains, which in a freshly made membrane are connected. So protons can go from one electrode to another via these paths. Upon time, upon aging, some of these domains start to reorient. Initially, they are oriented parallel to electrode and they connect few of these channels, which helps to produce more conductivity. But when the domains in the middle of your membrane start to reorient, this connectivity is broken, right? So this is the idea. And of course, is it possible to see something like this in computer simulation? This is a bit of course uh, challenge because this probably is very slow, right? But we, we try to see something of this. This is just idea, but not proof. Another, and this now simulation. Another very interesting and strange effect is the following. This group studied TG in hydrated nafion and plotted as a function of lambda. These are normal experimental values. And simulations, which are done in this Canadian group, shows decrease of TG by a few hundred kelvins. Unbelievable, this is a huge effect. If you have a lot of water inside, TG is 200 kelvin instead of 400 for dry sample. Okay, interesting. Why? Big effect. Another, another paper, and this is now the full temperature dependence of density of hydrated nafion. So this is density, this is temperature. Well, if you now fit it with lines, definitely you see this low TG value, which is about 200 kilometers. But we didn't discuss this. Something happened here, from my point of view. If you have eagle eye, you see the change of slope here. The guys do not address it at all. All right, nice, because then we can study them better, I think. I was in India, I had one month. Why not? Uh, why not? Why not? We just prepare samples, so dry nafion and hydrated nafion. We write lambda, the same force field, the same nafion, the same uh, lamp software. First, we produce TG for the dry nafion, 
right? So density, temperature, no water here. Now, and this is cooling rate. It's my best stability to cool it down with one Kelvin per picture second and slower 100 times 0.01 Kelvin per picture second. These are cooling curves from the change in slope. I can extract the G, slow cooling 390, fast cooling 440. The shift is perfect, 50 Kelvin. If I am impatient, I always start to freeze my system earlier. If I want to compare with experiment, this is always up, 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 but I know why, because still these are huge cooling rates. Right? I don't care. I just want to see the change within simulation. Now I add water, what happens? Now I add water, and this is busy slide. Density as a function of temperature for nafion with different amount of waters inside. And inside each bunch, the colors, uh, they are the same as here. They are different because of different cooling rates within fixed lambda. So I fix, I, I fit everything. And again, this is dry TG, dry nafion TG. This is very hydrated nafion TG. Do I see plastification effect? Plasticization effect as a, Fleur and others? No, I see anti-plasticization. TG is increasing when you add water. It's opposite to what they say. And then explanation from my point of view, well, they're different. They're probably water squeezes your chains and then they're less mobile. I talked to Semyonov, you know the name, and then he suggests that, oh no, it's rubbish as usual. It's because of additional crystallization which you induce, but this is okay. Can be different explanation, but definitely we don't see any drastic decrease, but why? So why, why? The, the guys in Canada, they are not stupid. They, they, they probably see something. Okay, see something. And then I, uh, I decided to cool it down further. So I stopped at 200, but I want to cool, continue cooling. First, I want to check my density. This is the results of Fleury group. These are experimental results. And these are results of present simulations. Just density, a different lambda. Not, not far from his results or even closer to experiments. There's a big difference, of course, force fields are not perfect. You don't want to match exactly the experiments, but we are not far from uh, ballpark, right? Okay, if you cool down further, what, what happens? You see this second glass transition at very low temperature together with this one. Well, the resolution, the contrast is not that big. We can explore, explore different methods to extract the G by plotting, for example, the first derivative of this from U.S. peak. But definitely there is one here at low temperature and we associate it with the glass transition of confined water, nothing else. And, it, and roughly this, this, these temperatures are produced for in the, in the area of uh, water uh, simulations. I am definitely not an expert in this. If you cool down water, you produce glass, not ice. Sometimes, yeah. So 180 is a glass transition for water, and this is exactly what these guys observed. But if you speak about glass transition of polymer, well, this is a, this is a very high. So, so uh, this is also well somehow in agreement with this plot from from this paper, but it's not explained at all. It's connected to water glass transition. Right. What about plastics? I hope you see the colors. So this is dry nafion. Red is uh, backbones. And then you put water, and this is high temperature, and what is blue? Do you see the percolated path? Yes, it spans the whole box. And then at this high temperature, you start to cool it down very quickly. If you cool down quickly, this percolation is not broken. It's not broken. This is still existing. Now, this is the box of very quickly cool nafion. This is the box which is cooled a little bit slower. And this is the box which is cooled very slow, computationally slow. You see the difference? Yes, percolation is a cool state. If you allow your system to relax, the water domains, they do not really yet, but at least they relax and they are not connected to it. Well, I need some coarse grain in here in order to study the real reorientation of domains, which would be nice to continue to prove. To check. So this is actually connected to the explanation of non-monotonic uh, uh, proton conductivity, which is uh, suggested by experimental groups. Okay, and then what is the message here? And we study, of course, the distribution of this water cluster, their sizes. If you cool down slower, you produce larger water clusters and smaller in amount. 
So they are large and less connected. This is the message from the cluster analysis which we do with uh, Ovito software. Yes, this is not interesting, not interesting, I almost done. This is nice. And then of course, because of the breaking of uh, percolation, you also see that diffusion constant, it's better to look here. The diffusion constant of water and hydronium is very sensitive to the cooling rate. It's always lower if you cool down slower because of breaking of percolation. This is a fixed lambda and this blue curve is always below orange curve. And this is produced with slow cooling. So percolation of water cluster is definitely connected to the problems of the cooling. Well, three conclusions and I will show you a few more results and then I'm done. So no plasticization whatsoever. We see actually quite opposite. We produce, uh, if you study glass transition, two glass transition and dehydrated membranes, one associated with confined water, another with polymer matrix. And breaking of percolation is nice effect, which should be studied, but probably on more coarse grained level. Composite membranes, this we done with Postas and Yorgos, and then, well, I think they continue to do this. And this is the graphene oxide sheet inside natrium. I studied this nice paper because graphene oxide or graphene, graphene nanophila is changing properties of polymer matrix very, 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 very drastically. This is a nice paper, very nice one of Anastasia and Franklin Magellis. And this can be done actually, their, their, their conclusions can be checked because they want to do it for, for this membrane and also for uh, PCM for phase change materials, which are not polymer matrices filled with the with graphene plates. So how the graphene plate change dynamics and then transport properties of uh, polymer materials. Okay, well, this is uh, mainly the Indian business. Now they try to do natrium, not in water, but in this ionic liquid. Ionic liquid is quite complicated here, and they study anhydrous properties of the water in uh, Well, I spoke a lot about molecular dynamics ideas, of course, to go to larger scales. Of course, Rainian, one alternative. Another one which we try to do is dissipated particle dynamics. So this is my typical computer simulation box with dissipated particle dynamics compared to much larger centers. So that's what we try to do now. It's equal to real life centers. That's it. Thank you very much. Questions now for people who are online, um, please raise your hands when you have a question and we'll work through them like that. And for people who are here today, um, please, can you speak into the microphone if you have a question so people online can hear? Have to switch it on probably or not. Or... Um... <laughs> About the water model, first of all, it is it is an explicit water model. It's explicit water with uh, hydrogen, oxygen, and BCFF. It's not but charged. it's not it's not charged. The, the force field does not describe charges of water. A compass describes, so we took charges from water from compass. Not perfect water, but what is charged? Okay, okay. I, I will remember the details. And mm -hmm. Definitely, if you want to be perfect, you better compare with other compare, not mm -hmm. compare, but keep Deep 3P is the deep 3P and SPC. I, I, I don't know. I cannot answer what mm. will be the effect. I, I mean, in, I was wondering if um, uh, the not uh, describing of uh, charges on water uh, affects uh, the whole behavior because these are ionic liquids. So there is charge in the. But what is also charged from compost? We have charges, but again, I don't know how perfect are these charges. Uh, Partial charges, they are always everywhere. Everything is charged. Ah, uh, okay, okay. But so again, was, yeah, charges of keep, re, keep 3P, for example, can be different. And still nice to check how is this affecting, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. affecting the properties. I cannot answer this. Okay. But we have some charges. And uh, one more about the hydration level. Lambda was a parameter which describes the hydration level. But um, 
what's the connection between this parameter and the, uh, let's say, the real amount of water contained in the yes. simulation? Yes. Say, okay, every chain has 10 side groups. Okay. We have 20 chains. We have then uh, 200 side groups. Lambda five means five waters per side group. 200 times five, we have thousand waters. Okay. For example, if lambda is 20, 4,000, yeah, well, yeah, whatever. So, 2,000 orders, it's really idea. connected to lambda. You need to take into account counter ions, but it's only a few of them. So, total amount is definitely defined by lambda. It's one to one connection, but it's a few thousand orders okay. in this simulation. So, are there are any uh, regions in these uh, networks where uh, water attains its bulk density? Boxes are still small, and then these micelles are nanometer in diameter. This is definitely not bulk no. water. It's very no. confined. It's very confined. But it would be nice to go to large scale and really see a few micelles, few domains. This is the, my dream to either say, invent something more coarse grain or really explore. Implicit solvent. Implicit solvent. Or implicit solvent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, there are many things, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. Sumidipta left us. Yes, mm -hmm. he's, and I have no other. Okay. okay, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Dennis. Uh, Alexei, it was really exciting. Yeah. So just a short question about the antiplastization effect, because it was not clear to me. Why do, why do you see this? Can you please comment a little bit on that? Antiplastization in these yeah. terms means that you no, I understand what it means, but is I understand this, but why, why is why? this happening? Yeah, why? My explanation is because you add water, water compress upon the chains, they are less mobile. If they are less mobile upon hydration, they start to freeze earlier when they flow. They are not mobile. But these are NPT simulations, right? It's NPT. So the pressure is always the same. The pressure is the same, but the conformations of chains can be different. Because water, you have less space for holes. Other alternative, or maybe together with this, that upon adding water, you change course morphology, not only the chain packing, but also crystallize addition of water. And they also are more solid like PG or TM or whatever, their properties are more solid. It's anti plastization again. This is not solid. So just as a follow up, I was wondering exactly about what you mentioned. If you compute, for example, the conformation ratio. Or other properties of the conformations of the chain. Conformation ratio. Conf conformation tensor. Tensor. Oh, you mean the, the second the moment of the end-to-end -end vector. You the shape, so you have a tensor and you see the, the shape uh, of the chain. Yeah, we didn't or the orientation of neighboring chains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah really exactly. Or, yeah. Because you are right. Then in that case, you might see. Yeah, yeah, we definitely should see that in the okay. change of uh, anisotropy. Okay. Question from Yanis. Very interesting results. I just had a, a question about uh, the increase of uh, glass transition upon uh, the hydration level. Do you think this is also attributed to the uh, uh, hydrophobicity, or the inherent hydrophobicity of, uh, of napkin? How? No. Hydrophobicity is always there. So backbone is always hydrophobic. So. Is, but uh, I don't know if, if it's uh, how, how to continue. Uh, so yes, I, maybe, but I don't see the the connection. If they are pushed to, uh, to aggregate more, then, uh, I don't know. Yes, okay. Because uh, I see. So they aggregate more because more they don't like water. If you add more like water, water, they aggregate more. Then again, they are more effectively compressed. So this is probably connected to the, the first idea. Lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compressed. You're right. You're right. Yes, probably this is a well. Another one connected with explanation, but this should be checked. Okay. Again, confirmation would be different. Yes, thank you. Very nice. Yes. Thank you. Um, so f if we start from the first principles, from the chemistry, of the polymer that you're using for the polyelectrolyte. 
Uh, are these two polyelectrolytes uh, strong or weak polyelectrolytes? Are these having like uh, dissociative or like having a certain degree of ionization respect to the, the pH of the solution? This is the first question where you start from the first principle there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know the definition of strong and weak. Definitely they, they are very uh, charged if you have enough water. If lambda is below three, they are not ionized. If you increase lambda, then all sulfonate, sulfonate okay. is charged. And then for sulfonilamide, they are no. You have to have large lambda. But I really don't know the exact numbers for strength. You, okay, for the... You need enough water. Otherwise, they are weak. Well, how weak they are? I don't know. I, I don't know you need to address this like the dissociation constants of the protonated groups that you have in your chemistry there you have like uh, for this pif a uh, which this is very interesting for electrolyte you have this amine group on the side chain and this uh, acid sulfonate uh, on the side chain there i did uh, i did study a similar polyelectrolyte during my phd and uh, check maybe try like in future like a simulation just pure like in a water dilute solution with this specific polyelectrolyte and change temperature to check if there is any like for this kind of polymers and polyelectrolytes i have seen a, a lcst behavior low critical solution temperature for this specific kind of polymers polyelectrolytes so this is something that you could try there testing if this or check experiments there if this kind of polyelectrolyte not nathion but the other one that you have shown there maybe this i suspect that because i have like studied a similar one with having a similar side chain having acrylic acrylic acid and amine groups maybe in simulations we just assume that lambda is above something yes we simply ionize it by hand because we cannot uh, 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 we don't have a force field change change artificial change manually yourself the ionization okay, the state, of, uh, the, of, uh, the ionization yes, check like 100% ionization, 50 and 0%. Okay, we studied this, but I don't know, I don't remember the results now. We did it as you suggested. Okay. Yes. We didn't study, but now here, everything is analyzed. But indeed, we do it manually, changing okay. the amount of groups which can be charged. I, I can okay. check this way. Myself, okay, this LCST behavior for this kind of polyelectrolytes, I saw them when they were zero ionized. Not 100% ionized. So maybe, yeah, this is something also. Right. Okay, very interesting and very nice. Uh, this thank kind you. of materials are very interesting for the future to be studied there. Okay. Thank you, thank you. also plays a critical role in the formation of these uh, paths, let's say. Uh, is there here any... It's very easy to get the amount of uh, hydrogen bonds, especially if you have graphene oxide, simply calculate yeah, yeah. here, but we didn't do this, no. Mm. Definitely this connected to, say, average hydrophilicity of your, of your sample. Mm -hmm. amount of hydrogen bonds can be done. Yeah. Why do you want it? Just to connect with what? With uh, uh, hydrogen body, let's say between between water molecules and nafian. If I calculate it, so what? What can I say? You can um, estimate uh, if there is a um, reduction of the hydrogen mode network of water due to the existence of this okay. uh, region. Yeah, 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 uh, okay, nice suggestion. No, we didn't do this. No, mm. but it's nice. It can be done easily. I think. Mm. Yes, it can be done easily in, atom in uh, fully in atomistic simulation. simulations. It's easy. Yeah. Mm. Thanks. Thank you. Simulations, how, how, like what is the simulation time? Like, because it's kind of like uh, the statement that you have saying that you have reached equilibrium there for this kind of law of simulations, only the density? You always uh, Thermodynamic check property. equilibrium if you're above Tg. If you're below Tg, you cannot be in equilibrium. So at 600 Kelvin, well, definitely you have to check that you're in equilibrium. And then fluctuations of energy, for example, of density, yes. Okay, you have shown some results uh, in terms of dynamical properties, diffusion coefficients. 
in this case, like you probably need uh, long, uh, long simulations, right, to reach this kind of equilibrium. You measure mean square displacement as a function yes. of time, and of course you have to reach the linear regime to extract the diffusion of the center of masses of the chain. This should be, this should be long. These are well, at, in, uh, the chains are very short. A lot of water, they are li a little bit mobile, so you need a few nanoseconds of simulation with one tenth of second time step. We have explicit. Hydrogens, the time step is not that big. So okay. it's quite and this expensive, kind of but size doable. Of, it's huh? This size of polymers, are this something that they use in real life applications? Yes, this, this uh, is called natrium 1100. Okay. Because it's a molecular weight of natrium to ionizable group. So it's experimentally available, mm -hmm. not absolutely artificial sample. This is available experimentally. Okay, interesting. Okay, thank you. Uh, if people who are online have any questions, please unmute your microphones and just ask. We have many questions already. <laughs> hey, Alexei, so if you calculate, let's say, the segmental relaxation time of the chains as a function, even above TG, do you see again a faster dynamics when you increase the level of hydration? If I assume, or a slower, if I assume that you this should, is related. You should, yeah, but we didn't do this, yes. No analysis of uh, polymer dynamics, because, well, right. the main topic is to calculate the mobility of water and, pro and protons. So dynamics was done only on water and protons, and not much on polymer itself. But yeah. I but, think so, and also if you speak about the side groups, it should be some function of the distance right. from, from the backbone, but also the, the ends are charged. If they attract hydro, hydronium ions, they should be they should less be. mobile. So it should be competition of the distance effect, uh, which, uh, which is favor of peak mobility, and then attraction of charge group, which uh, goes in opposite direction, trade off. But so if you do this local analysis, then you can. No, you can do this, of course, and then you'll see some interesting results. Uh, any results, any per, uh, permeability uh, results uh, by using the polymide model that you, that you showed at the beginning of the hydrated polymide? Because I, 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 I think the experimental results they publish, but uh, you speak about what? I just, I just Simulation. That, uh, given, given the fact that this is more rigid polymide, I, I would expect that the sensitivity would be smaller. That's yeah, I, I need to check. They definitely published recently this paper. It's a group in uh, Stanford, uh, Curtis Frank and um, his colleagues. They are big experts in polyamides. Right. Uh, if there are no more questions, um, I'd like to thank everyone for being here today. And it's good to see Professor Newland for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so lot for good your attention. Everyone. That uh, we're particularly happy, not because Alexei, okay, is also a good friend, but also he's our first speaker uh, from outside with physical presence. Yes. Since this series of seminars started almost Thank two you years much ago. For, for inviting. <laughs> yes, so for me is. Uh, also one of the first visits uh, thank you very much after COVID. We hope uh, COVID is more was finished and we're back to sort of normal, I guess. <laughs> thank you.